Hi folks, my name is Noisy B Tiger, and you might call me Kiki. And today I am going to talk about We Were Completely Besides Ourselves, a novel by Karen Joy Fowler. We Were Completely Besides Ourselves is a story about family of five, which consists of a mother, a father, an eldest son, and a pair of twin daughter. Told from the perspective of the youngest daughter, their family were a usual American family, living their normal lives in the freest country in the world. God bless America until they were devastated by the disappearance of the eldest son and one of the twin daughters. Throughout this book, the youngest daughter recounts how this tragedy unfolded while also tells how the tragedy still haunts the remaining family members, making themselves stuck in this limbo that they are struggling to get out of. Right off the bat, the youngest daughter, her name's Rose, tells her story not from the beginning but in the middle of the story, years after the tragedy had happened. This is one of the aspects of the book which I like is that the book really has a, for a lack of a better word, disjointed or a non-linear way of storytelling in which she switches back and forth between the past and the future. We really get to see tragedy that had happened to her in the past really affected her way of dealing with things in the future. The contrast of her family dynamics before and after tragedy also really showed here and I would say it's pretty tragic. This non-linear way of storytelling also enables the author to keep the level of suspense really high throughout the book. Like, my god, this book is one hell of a ride, I'll give you that. I was completely beside myself during reading this book. I know that doesn't make any sense, but hear me out. Like I mean, every time I open this book to read it, I couldn't really guess what's going to happen next. It's it's just really hard to put down. From the brief description that I gave you earlier in this video, you might assume that this book is a fictional crime investigative book that is chock full of really dark eerie vibes, reminiscent of the Lovely Bones or the works of Karen Slaughter. Stephen King, and any other thriller writers. Well, you are right about this book being an investigative mystery thriller sort of book, but boy, you couldn't be further from the truth if you thought this book is dark, because this book is one of the funniest and most entertaining book I've read this year so far. What made this book so funny to me is that the characters are really colorful in this book. Like, the characters ranges from being cookie cutter, but not boring, to being utterly deranged and unhinged as if they came out from the universe of the Big Lebowski. Not to mention that the main character and narrator Rose, the way she acts, is really... Um, how do I put it? She exudes the energy of Aubrey Plaza in Parks and Recreation, which is like bitchy, I don't give a fuck attitude if we see from the outside. From, from the inside, we see, as she narrates throughout the novel, she has a lot, and I mean a lot to unpack. The juxtaposition between her actions and thoughts feels tragic in retrospect, but when I'm reading this book, it felt like it was comedy, strangely. Now, I think it is impossible to talk about this book without addressing the elephant in the room, so we're going into spoiler zone. Hit it. As we may recall, the two family members that disappear were the eldest son and the older of the twin daughters. While the eldest son is undoubtedly human, the daughter is not a human. Yes, she's not human. In fact, she's a monkey. Yes, she's a monkey. The older daughter is a monkey. At this revelation, in a very meta way, Rose explains that her sister, her name is Fern, is not a pet. She was fostered by her parents alongside herself. She also reveals that both of her parents were researchers. They conducted this experiment to see whether human, if brought up from infancy together with an infant chimpanzee, could communicate with chimpanzee naturally and understand what they are saying. Which turns out to be impossible. Throughout her time growing up with Fern, she noticed that the bond that Fern had with her family is so strong that it felt weird. She felt that her father, mother, and especially her older brother loves Fern more than her. Eventually, one day an incident happened that causes Fern to leave the family for good, and the family never been the same since. Her father is drowning in liquor, drinking the regrets away. Her mother was depressed for years after Fern is gone. His brother became a basket case and eventually ran away from home and never looked back to look for Fern. Meanwhile, the guilt has been on Rose's mind since the incident because she knew that she inadvertently causes Fern to go. This sounds really depressing, but if you haven't read this book yet, I urge you to read it. 
It has a bittersweet ending in which all the wrongs and all the regrets that the family had since the disappearance of Fern washed away by the tide of time when they finally meet again. Now, I want to talk about the concept of human fostering chimpanzees or cross fostering chimpanzees, which is not a really foreign concept for me. I think, like I used to watch Curious George and I've heard a monkey that can communicate with human using ASL, short for American Sign Language. What I'm curious about is whether this kind of experiment where a human baby brought up together alongside chimpanzee baby exists. So I did a little bit of research, found this old review article from mid 80s that documents cross fostering chimpanzees and I found none. What existed was cases where only and only infant chimpanzees was fostered by human without infant human growing with the infant chimpanzees. You can dispute me but that's what I can found. I couldn't imagine the backlash that someone will receive if they decided to brought up their child alongside a chimpanzee. In conclusion, should you read we were completely beside ourselves? Hell yeah, go read it. It is a delight if you can get a hold of it. I think this is one of the best book I've read this year so far. Not that I've read many books this year, mind you. It's suspenseful, it really keeps you on the edge of your seat. The characters in this book are all interesting. Combined with the style of writing and the character of the narrator, it is undoubtedly a funny and delightful book for me. I'd give it 4 out of 5 stars. What do you guys think of my opinion? Leave comments down below. I'll read it all like pages of phone book.